Hey guys, welcome back and happy Halloween. In this video I have a special for you. It's a complete project in just one video where I turn an olive jar into a pumpkin that also doubles as a lighting feature. This is a really cool project in my opinion because I'm repurposing something that was supposed to be thrown away into something that's actually really awesome. In this video I show you every little step that I took to make this thing. And I actually had to come up with my own methods on trying to achieve certain things like curved surfaces and stuff. Some of it's quite brilliant. And I feel that after watching this, you should be able to make something like this too. And don't forget to give it a like to help send it along its way. And so without further ado, let's get started. Okay, these are some of the things I'm going to be using in this project. I got some foil tape. I got some Super Sculpey which I'll probably be using just a little bit of cosplay in this project too. Uh, some paint. This is pumpkin orange, burnt umber, and marsh green. Nut and bolt assembly. Some washers. This is a glow-in-the-dark button thing where when you smash it, it glows. A palette knife. Some basic sculpting tools. I'm going to be drilling something. Some pliers and an olive jar. So this is what I'm going to be using in this project. So let's get going. Okay, first thing on the list is this olive jar. I really like the size and shape of this olive jar. It's pretty much as high as it is wide, which makes it as close to something round as possible. You can find these jars a little taller and everything, but this, this works for me right now. This would normally get thrown away and wind up in a landfill. So we're repurposing this. So that's always good, right? Um, what we need to do is just clean this the inside of it and remove this label. Make sure it's all nice and cleaned up. Fortunately, I've already got that done. Here's one already nice and clean. Okay, on the bottom of the inside of the lid, I'm going to add some foil tape. And the reason I'm doing this is because it's very reflective and it's going to make the light feature inside, inside more enhanced. Now I've already got these pre-cut I just kind of measured it out and it's easier to do this first before I um, add the hardware to this, which is what I'm going to be doing next. There. Already we got like a good reflective surface. This is going to help us a little bit. And we'll put the lid back on and somewhere in the middle, I'm going to just drill a hole into the center. I was trying not to bear down on that because I don't want to, you know, damage the lid. But we made it through. Now I got these washers and nuts and bolts and stuff. We're going to need one of these and one nut washers. It could probably get away with not using washers, but I thought, you know, why not? It'll just make it more stable. So we're going to take one of the washers and put it on this. Stick this through. All right, another washer on that side. So I got a washer on both sides and then this nut. This nut will hold it all together for us. A pair of pliers on this side to hold that nut and preferably I'd like to use a Phillips, but I only have a flat head on me and thankfully this takes both. That is really, really tight. So it ain't gonna do anything ever. And that's what we want. You're probably wondering, what the heck is that going to be? This is the stem to the pumpkin. Now I'm going to grab the base of this and hopefully I'm going to be able to bend this. Oh yeah. I didn't think I'd be able to bend it for some reason. But of course I'm incredibly strong so that's some sarcasm in case you missed. I like that right there. Uh, I didn't want it to be just straight up because that kind of limits on, on the design. I wanted to kind of go over one way or the other anyways. This works really good for me right here. Get the lid on nice and tight. That way you know it's secure. And now we can orientate this as far as how do we want the face. I think I'll take the, the little stem can go off to the right. So that would mean that the face is right here. This is what we got to remember. So now here's where this other piece of foil tape comes in to play. I got this strip right here. I kind of ran out of foil tape. I was wanting to use a little more. 
Um, now I know this side is not as shiny as that side. This side is the adhesive side. Uh, I don't really think it matters. It'd be difficult to stick it in there and try to put it on the walls. So I'm just gonna go like this. Just got to steer clear of where the mouth, be sure that I stay off where the mouth and the eyes might end up. So that should be good right there. And once again, this is just going to help reflect a little bit. I really think it would have been better doing the shiny side on the inside, but it's difficult to try to get this stuff to cooperate on, you know, with something like that. It's a done deal now that's stuck on there. Um, but the idea behind that is the, the illuminated thing that I'm going to put inside here, it'll reflect off this. So when you look in through its eyes, it'll have this bouncing off. Instead of this pink clay, this will be more reflective than that. So that's the idea behind this uh, foil tape. I don't think you really have to use it, but that's what we got going on here. Um, okay, so this is ready to go. We're ready. This is this is our armature, pretty much. Um now I got this super sculpy. I'm going to go ahead and cover the bottom. Mainly this is just to keep it from sliding all around on me so I don't lose my mind. Cut the excess away. Now I got to figure out how much clay it's going to be on here. It's going to bulb out a little bit depending on the, the design. Um, if I were to make it an actual circle it would take a lot of clay. It would have to come like out here probably. Meaning that's that's quite a bit of clay going all the way around this. I want to try to not do that because I really don't want to use too much clay on this. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a, a little bit of the Super Sculpey and roll it out to where it's tapered on both ends. I'll have it to where it's thicker on the top side like this and more tapered towards the bottom. Then bring it to right here. There you see how that kind of comes out a little further than this lid. That way I can put a little bit around the lid too and it'll be one I, one seamless thing. So this is what we're gonna try to do. We're gonna roll out a snake that's this thick right here in the middle. So let me just cut that. I'm making this up as I go, guys. I really am. All right, this is the middle. This will get me started. So now I'm gonna roll out a snake that's at least a snake pretty much like this. Now I'm just rolling this out into a snake. This needs to be long enough to go all the way around this sculpture. So we got plenty of clay now to move around this. I'm gonna cut the end on that. Awesome. Now this is gonna kinda of act like a guide. It's the height of the arch. That's what this is. And we don't wanna alter that any See how this does right here? It's gonna work out pretty good. I'll just do more snakes above it and below it. All right, so we're gonna be going a little bit smaller, the snake, but it still needs to be the same length. All of them will. I wanna sculpt a pumpkin first and then carve the face into it as opposed to trying to sculpt a carved pumpkin. I wanna follow the same process as you would have to Normally, normally you would start with a pumpkin and carve it. And I just think that would be easier as opposed to, you know, sculpt it already carved. All right. That is smaller than what is up there. See how it kind of goes like this and the third piece will be small, smaller. All right. So now we're going to do a ring once I'm convinced I got it the same as the top, thinner, probably, a little thinner. I'll work it on there like this. Now you're probably saying, those ribs are going the wrong way. It actually looked more like a pumpkin going this way. But we'll, we'll fix all that with our sculpting once we're done with this part. So I definitely have the look that I'm going for. It's rounded a little bit here, and it'll do it even more once I smash all this down, which we'll do here in a minute. This piece will be even smaller, skinnier than the last one. 
this is what's going to give us that arched look that we're looking for because pumpkins are round and this jar is a cylinder so we're trying to get away from the cylinder look and get a round look using clay if you ever go too too much where you're making it too thin just move your hands in it the other direction like this and you'll find the clay bunches back up then you can kind of start over again we'll start with the top and work our way around we're getting a nice little taper there it's taking some time but it's working all right got a nice another little long piece all right so this one's going to go down here in the bottom now down at the bottom i'm going to put an even skinnier piece If you have trouble rolling stuff like this out and it's just wavy you know because you're pushing too hard with your fingers I just barely ride my fingers on this and I move them around and I got them at angles like this so I wind up striking the clay and um, not just a linear way like this but kind of like that and just move it around also don't press very hard at all because you're just letting the clay roll itself into a um you know the cylinder that you're looking for the snake but that's pretty much how I do it all right this piece is going to go down here on the bottom and I think we'll be done there'll be enough clay to do what, we're ne what we need to do down here now this one for up the top we determined that it should be a little thicker because I want to try to incorporate the lid into it all right, that looks good. Now I'm going to, I guess, leave the lid on. I don't think it would pose a problem. Let me roll out just a teeny, teeny snake for that bottom. This way I'm not pulling from the other clay too much to try to make up for it. This could be a small snake. Yes, I'm glad I rolled out another little snake for this. I like that. All right, okay, so here is our the start of our little pumpkin. Right now it kind of looks a little weird. The grooves are going the wrong way. That's okay, we're going to work this on. I'm gonna start it with this polymer clay roller. Do it like at an angle. I'm touching the lid almost and just ro rolling it around this way, all the way around. Before I do anything else, I want to do this. That way it's kind of compressed because these move around still. But as I do this right here, they'll become compressed together, which is what I'm wanting. Now I'm going to turn it upside down and kind of do the same on the bottom. See how they move around a little bit? Still angling it because we're trying to do a round surface. All right, so I did the top and the bottom. Now I need to do the middle a little bit. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna try to just use my surface here to do this. And I'm gonna do it very gently, but I'm just driving it around on this surface. And you can tell that it's starting to take a round shape, which is what we're wanting, because pumpkins are round. They're not tubes. Although you can force a pumpkin to grow into a certain shape by making it grow into a container, like a square box, like a plastic square box. You can grow a square pumpkin. I don't know if you knew that or not. If you don't believe me, Google it. I told my mom once, she's just like, you cannot, there is no such thing as square pumpkins. She Googled it and there was images all over it. She's like, what? Yeah, you'd be surprised what you can do with different things. The purpose of that was to kind of get these compressed together so I can do more with it. I'm trying to do full rolls. 
that actually is starting to look really good. All right, so I'm going to free up this lid. Just sticking my palette knife in there and cutting around it like so. Now we can work on the stem and the, the surface area of the top. First, I'm going to scratch this up. Okay, I need a little bit for this base area. But what I'm going to do first is I'm going to add a little bit of TLS, just a little bit, on this surface of this metal. Plus, I, I scratched it up. That'll help it bond. I try to use the same brush when you, working with TLS. I clean it out with alcohol and it works pretty well, but it just makes sense to use the same brush for this. Get this worked on nicely. That's still tightened down, it's just moving around because this is a thin flimsy piece of metal. That's why I went with the washers, one in each end. It makes it more stable. And you know what, we're gonna put a nut on this too. This will act as an anchor. Okay, it won't go no further because I bent it, but that's fine. It, this thing right here won't pop off ever because of that. Okay, so I'm just gonna freestyle here. I got half of this, the small half right here. It's just a little mound. You see what's going on? Now I'm going to pinch and just work this out. Looking for somewhat uh, a dome, a lens, so to speak. It needs to be bigger than that. Would you believe I made... Would you believe I made the same thing twice? Let's see what I can do now. I just joined those together. I'm going to get rid of that line where they come together. This is a template. It can be used as a template. That looks good. Okay, so now I'm going to find the center of this. Close to it. You know what? Just for now, we'll pull that off. And right here where the center is, close enough. Stick that on here. Then we'll put this back. Awesome. Now we have translucent liquid Sculpey. Underneath this. So the next step would be to sculpt our lines. Now I probably should jump on the internet and take a couple look at some pumpkins. But here we go. Here's a pumpkin. <laughs> so you think like um we'll do one on both sides like this and then one crossways from that making a plus sign I'm not going too deep in case I decide this is not a good idea and then one right here giving this an eight section or like an eight piece pie I'm pushing in towards the back here, like that, and dragging forward, but I'm lessening up, I'm lightening up my grip, the, the pressure. Now, we need to take this clay right here, and we're going to match this stem. See how the stem's leaning over? We're going to kind of match that a little bit, and I'm going to just cut into this and open her up and just bury that hardware make sure it's buried in there good which that looks pretty good and try not to go too crazy with this because now I don't know where that thing is that I just buried we'll pinch this out a little bit and make it look kinda of squared like it's been cut I'm gonna use this right here because it's long and it's somewhat wider I wanted something a little wider 
but I'm going to stick this down in here and then roll it like that. Let's do this side. We'll do one real hit real quick here and see how this looks. Yeah, I like that. That gives it the rounded look we're, we're looking for. So now I need to do that on all these others. Come in this way. Just roll it. I'm trying to stay off the stem when I do this. Of course, like anything, when you're doing something like this, repetition gives you um, kind of experience. And you wind up getting a little quicker. might look a little better. Start over here, and by the time you get around, it'll look even better. <laughs> At least that's how I do. I don't know about anybody else. See, I'm just getting it really close, and then the rest I can kind of get with my thumb here. At least it's what I found. Now for the stem part, I'm just trying to close up any gaps. Like right here, you see that gap? We don't want that. This tool will be better for this angle. All right, now we're gonna cut some lines into this and it could be pretty much anywhere, but we need to follow through and kind of go like this. Just random. We want it to look like wood, long streaks pretty much. Crisscross every now and again, but not too much. We come back with the sharp part and we'll cut some lines this way on this end I'm trying to do um where it divides a little bit like where it's kind of maybe dried out cuz these these stems they dry out a little bit they get pretty rough looking just stab the end of this we're roughing it up kind of pick and poke pull at it in different ways. Basically the whole surface on this outside without trying to do the sides, um, taking away that smoothness to this. See how that looks now? That looks really good. The top looks awesome. Now we need to continue our work on down. See this line right here? I'm gonna continue it by going down like that. Let's go ahead and get them all on there. The lid's tight down on there, so when we take the lid off and put it back on, it should line up correctly. I am going to try to take this off. Ha! Look at that. Huh? I guess I'm back to this thing. I'm basically pressing on one side of my line, and then I'll come back and press the other side. I'm opening it up. This is a pretty massive area to be doing all the way around here. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus on just this one section or maybe two sections so you can see me working together with them. This other side I'll do the same thing. I'm going to cut down into it and roll the clay away from the cut on both sides. I'm only messing with the segment that I'm working on. I'm not touching this one or this one next to it. It's just this middle one. Right now is when we can get rid of the lines by pressing on it. And I'm going to put a couple drops of Sculpey clay softener. Or just one. That stuff really does go a long way. And get it going like this. See if I can't use that to my advantage. And I think it did. Look what that did we have that telltale segment that runs down the pumpkin that we're all familiar with. That's what we're trying to achieve. But this is what we got going on here. It looks like a pumpkin to me. So I just need to do that to all these other sections. Using the liquid clay softener allows me to kind of float it out to where it's all just evened out. Dragging it one good time like this can take the fingerprints out 
Okay, now that the pumpkin has been shaped, it's completed, it's a finished pumpkin, we can go ahead and start carving the face onto this. We're gonna start with like right here. We're gonna determine how wide these eyes are set. Probably should use my self-centering ruler. So I could put this on zero, which is right here. That tells me this goes over just a little bit more. Sometimes you can't trust your eyes. And these dots are the corner of the eyes. So I can just come up this way and I'll do the same over here. And I'm just going to now draw a curve coming this way and I'm gonna make sure I hit this little dot that I put right here. There we go. Now I'm drawing faintly in case I don't like what I got going on. I can just rub these lines away and start again. Okay, now for the mouth, I'm going to, you know, I'm just going to eyeball it, the mouth part. I'm going to hold my wrist still and turn this on this jar. Go a little further over here. See, this is the center, so we'll go down here and come back up to that curve that I just did. Okay, I also want to put some of these triangles up here at the top. These will act as pupils so to speak. It's going to be kind of hard carving all that probably, but um, we're going to give it a, we're going to give it a shot. So let's get to carving here. These tools aren't very sharp and they're kind of wide, so it's going to spread clay a lot, I'm thinking, but I'm going to carve into it following my lines that I just did. This is very interesting, I'm trying to carve this. Um, to make things easier on me, I think I'll add that little pupil thing that I wanted after the fact. It'd be easier just to carve this piece right here and add it than to try to, you know, omit this piece as I go. So let's just try that instead. I'm going to carve right on through it. You know what? I do have an X-Acto knife. Let me use that. All right. We got a little upgrade here. This is going to be way better for this. It's a little hobby knife. X-Acto knife. Um, it's not so blunt, thick, and it's very sharp. So I just got to the glass just now, which is a lot better. It's going to work a lot better for me. There. That was pretty much a full cut. Now I just need to pull that piece out. Oh wow. Yeah, hobby knife, definitely 100%. That side turned out pretty good. So let's do this side now. I don't know if that was a good shot or not. I wasn't quite looking at that at the camera. I was looking at that razor blade <laughs> you know I want to stay pretty safe so that came that came out fairly clean way cleaner than this other side if you noticed and that's because I tried to use something else that wasn't as um, that didn't have as much precision so let me take this piece right here I'm gonna cut this down on my marble but I'm doing it just like this right here it's you're not missing anything All right, now I'm just going to push that up into that other clay where I know it's well bonded with it. Nice. I got a little bit of trash up here in the corner and where the unevenness of the clay is, I'll just drag this up onto the other clay. This will help 
bind it to the other. I probably should have used some like a drop of TLS, to be honest, for high fidelity areas like this. That's usually a good. It's a good um, use for that clay, or the liquid form, anyways. Just following my line that I got here. This exacto knife is making this job super easy. And it looks like I'm cutting towards myself. That's something you never want to do. Just want to point that out. I'm not really cutting towards myself. I'm turning it with my, this hand. And this is staying stationary. So I don't want to give anybody bad habits. Never cut towards your body for any reason. Stay safe, everybody. All right, let's see what we got. Huh. I was careful not to mess this piece up. What we can do is draw some teeth from this. I'll just put this back in. Let's give them one big tooth right here. Maybe one right here. Maybe one right here. So we got up, down, up, down. Seems simple enough. Now I'll just cut this out using my hobby knife. And I'm just setting them back up there where they correspond. And I'll tool them on. Let's put a little spot of TLS on that. And then we'll work it around. That's going to cause that to bond very, very well. When you're using the TLS or Bacon Bond, you want to make sure you get the entire surface. That way the bond is true all the way through the whole item. Because any parts that you don't have will become a weak part, pretty much. Okay, I have a little piece of cosplay right here. That I'm rolling out into a snake. I could run this through the pasta machine, but I don't want it to grow in length, really. At least not too much. So I'm going to take some of it, and um, when, by smashing it this way, it'll get wider this way, which will. That's what I'm wanting it to do. So, I mean, now I can put it this this through the pasta machine. Awesome. This is going to work perfect. I want to do one little more thing for this right here. I'm going to uh, first add some TLS, kind of work it all around. But I'm putting TLS on this outer edge. I'm covering up this edge of the jar. By setting it on this marble, the clay won't go no further down than the metal because it's sitting on this marble. It's relatively flat so I'm just gonna go around well first I'm gonna cut the edge and then work this on here all the way around this cosplay smooths very nicely okay so I have a piece going all the way around that rim now that's fairly thick now I'm just gonna fold it back like this all the way around and work it onto that clay. I got it upside down now because I want to bring it around this way too. I want it to be all the way to this metal part. There, see how there's no gaps going around that? With my X-Acto knife, try to hold it at an angle and cut some of this off. Probably didn't have to do that. I could have just dragged it onto the other. I just chose to do this. It takes some of that excess clay away that I'm not going to need. So now with my tool, just drag that forward onto the other part. I'm going to use the tool first because it moves the least amount of clay in other areas that I don't want messed with. And then I can smooth it later. First, we're just going to just drag this clay. Now that that's done, 
I'll take a little bit of this softener. Oops, way too much. Bring it around and just morph that clay onto the other clay. Now that because I did the tooling first, look at that. Look at that. I don't know if this is a good camera angle, guys. Sorry. It's a. Uh, I I broke my charger at the last minute. Not the charger, but the wire, the um, corded battery thing and I'm using my camera batteries that I haven't used in a while and I'm kind of nervous about them dying on me so I feel like I'm rushing and I don't want to just stop and set up different camera angles I'm going to order another uh, you know power cord for this camera because that's critical I'm going to need that But I'm doing what I've been doing all along, just blending this in, morphing it to the other part by going doing little circles. I'm trying not to go into the clay, like push it and stuff, because there's a lid rim there that we're trying to bury, hide, and the more you mash down on it and stuff and squeeze it and whatnot, the more chances of surfacing that thing we just covered and this is actually turning out quite well I don't know how it's going to be after baking it but as far as it being you know like this it's quite quite well so now I'm going to take this tool right here where my little lines are the original ones make some new ones just to kind of carry that on there, that way it flows. And you can see how this cosplay is a different color than Super Sculpey. I'm gonna apply this clay softener onto the brush right here. And we're gonna take some of the harshness out of this part. So let me get some of this moisture off of here and, and also take the tool working out of this in the fingerprints by just painting it this way. This ain't gonna be perfect, but it'll be nice. And that's all that matters. But I'm getting in there and taking out any kind of harsh tooling, stuff that's gonna cause it to not look very good when painting, like right here in the end. Also, those pieces are brittle any little pieces will be brittle. Now, had I, had I done this all in cosplay, it wouldn't even be an issue. It's all just, would be just rubber pieces. That actually looks good. Okay, so here you have it, guys. Both these items are done and they're ready to go in the oven. I'm gonna put this in the oven at um, 275 degrees for about 45 minutes. That should do the trick. And we will do some painting. So, I will be right back. Here he is out of the oven. He's completely baked. I baked it for 45 minutes at 275 degrees. It came out pretty darn good. There's a lot of moonies on it, but that doesn't matter because we're going to paint it anyways. Now it's time to do some painting. Using a nylon brush, I'll start with the darkest color, burnt umber, and paint the stem. The goal for this part is to try to get that paint deep into those textured grooves that I did earlier in the video. I don't want any pink showing. While that's drying, I'll move to the eyeballs and the mouth area. I'm painting the inside of the mouth and the eyes, those flat panels that comes off the glass. Those are going to be black. The idea behind painting it black is to isolate it from that illuminated look. When I put something in there that glows, it doesn't absorb any of that light. It just looks like dark, hollow areas, which is what I'm looking for. Okay, by now, the stem is dry, so now we can put the marsh green on top of that brown that we just did. 
but we're going to kind of dry brush it on there. We're not going to put it on there very thick because we don't want to cover it completely. We want the cracks to still be brown. This is going to give it a kind of a faux paint. And now, finally, for the last part, we're going to use pumpkin orange to paint this here pumpkin. We're going to paint the lid, the face, all around it. I'm going to try to give this two complete coats of paint. That way it's nice and thick because Super Sculpey is a bit semi-translucent and it allows light to bleed through. I've already tested this and I don't want the light to actually bleed through the body. I just want the light to be able to come out of the eyes and the mouth. I also sealed this project with shellac from Zanzer Bullseye. I get it from Lowe's. It's my go-to product for sealing stuff. It gives it a nice little shine and protects the paint. And now for the part you've all been waiting for, or at least I have, it's time to illuminate the inside of this pumpkin. I got this here green button for 93 cents. <clears throat> That thing just exploded on me. Guys, that's pretty much it for this video. I really appreciate you for taking the time to watch this. It means a lot. It was a very long video. Sorry about that. But I call it a Halloween special. I was able to spend some time with you and do a complete project in one video. That's pretty awesome. Thank you all so much, and have a happy and very, very safe Halloween. Till next time, I'll see you here again soon. Thank you so much for watching.